Low points, dark times, many of us have been there. You know, my marriage falling apart. For Jasmine Taylor, juggling three kids in the midst of a divorce. Um, alcohol eventually became a coping mechanism. And she was unraveling, and then... My girls were struggling, I was struggling, and um, my youngest was only two and a half when I found out I was pregnant. A crisis pregnancy. And I didn't even have room in my vehicle for another car seat. Panic. I felt like parenting wasn't an option. Some of her family members suggested abortion. It was something that I uh, tried to, to consider, but something I could never personally um, go through with. Adoption became the natural solution. Had support from family, had support from the church that I was going to. Jasmine started the process, but... Something in my gut told me that there was more to the story. She found a Facebook group for birth moms. I was kind of expecting to find, um, you know, other birth moms who would, you know, kind of link arms with me and tell me that everything's going to be okay. And I found the complete opposite. Stories of regret and lifelong shame, grief... Just hearing that other side of the story that I had never heard growing up, you know, I've never, I never heard the term adoption trauma. Jasmine was already working with an adoption agency that was helping pay her rent. It's kind of like a carrot on a stick. Like, instead of helping these people, these women who are facing uh, any type of crisis pregnancy or, you know, in an unplanned situation. Um, instead of helping them financially, we are fundraising fifty, sixty, seventy thousand dollars $70,000 for these adoptions. There are approximately 36 couples waiting to adopt any given infant that's available. Renee Galen gave her son up for adoption 10 years ago. I ended up reaching out for the wrong help and the adoption agency was not interested in really giving me full options counseling. Her regret led her to create the nonprofit organization Saving Our Sisters, aimed at giving pregnant women considering adoption a non-biased scope of the choice. She considers pre-birth matching between birth mom and potential adoptive parents a grooming tactic. You know, not just the pre-birth matching, but also they'll pay expenses. So, oh, if you're struggling, let's, you know, pay your rent, or let's make your car payment, or let's get you some food, or let's get you some clothes. More than a decade ago, Renee said she was a single mom struggling with mounting debt when she found out she was pregnant. She had lousy insurance and her boyfriend didn't have the money to cover expenses. I felt like I was playing this game of beat the clock. Adoption became the answer. That decision was completely based on fear. She had a C-section, signed the papers, and then... I watched them strap him into their car. It was really tough. It's a tough memory. So she can sign it at the hospital if the discharge paperwork has been signed or 48 hours. So, and that's a huge rush. It really is. I mean, uh, when I first started doing this, um, they, the agency would wait 30 days before they would get a birth mother's consent. Mary Lou Miller-Wagstaff has been an adoption attorney in Florida for 40 years. But I've heard that Florida is an adoption-friendly state. They say that. What does that mean? I think that's a good question. I don't know what they mean by that because we have very strict requirements that have to be followed by the statute. According to American Adoptions of Florida, the average cost of adoption is between sixty and sixty-five thousand dollars. I know some are fifty to seventy-five thousand. I have heard that there are some agencies in the southern part of the state, southeastern primarily, that are as much as a hundred thousand. Where does that money go? Agency fees, prospective birth mother expenses, social workers, attorneys. Um, technically, under the Florida statute, we're only supposed to be charging 5000 So we have to explain to the court why it's higher. Miller Wagstaff has worked with the same adoption agency for years, where she says social workers offer birth mothers unbiased support. I have never had a sense that they are 
doing the grooming that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Would it surprise you if that's happening in other agencies? It would not at all, unfortunately. Um, there's a lot of vested interest in making sure that process goes through. And that's oftentimes why it's a lot of times difficult um, for a mother to unwind that adoption process. Nathan Vinning is a family law attorney based in Indiana. <laughs> He's represented birth mothers who changed their mind about adoption. When a, a mother oftentimes chooses to revoke that consent, there's a lot of roadblocks in the way. For instance, they have trouble getting access to the paperwork they signed. Sometimes there's almost intimidation in terms of you're going to have to pay all these fees back. And there's a, even access to the courts. It's hard to file a motion to contest the adoption without being able to find an attorney that even does that kind of law or, or even have the funds available to hire an attorney. And it was so stressful. Renee said she had agreed to an open adoption. Technically, until the adoptee reaches the age of adulthood, they are closed. I, I have no recourse. I have no legal recourse. I am a legal stranger. Heartache for so many like the couple on the other side, desperate to be parents. You know, that's exactly why we say that pre-birth matching, pre-birth anything, should not happen. They are just as vulnerable as an expectant mom. They want a baby so bad. And that, they should not be set up. And that's a setup, in my opinion. Uh, that was the first time in my life that I faced something that I couldn't do what I thought I could do. Mary Lou adopted her son and daughter 40 plus years ago. I remember when we got the call about my son and I was so excited about it. I forgot to ask the social worker, how's the birth mother? I still periodically will feel guilty about that. Renee lives with guilt of her own. The what if? I'm always thinking about him. You don't forget your kids. Um. She married her son's dad. They had a daughter years later. You know, I just, I keep going and keep hoping that he'll be proud of me one day. Sorry. <laughs> but it's tough, you know. Jasmine never went through with the adoption. His name is Kingston. Um, he is the most energetic, sweet, tender boy. He's four now and splits time between his mom and dad. He loves his sisters so much. He loves animals. He is an amazing addition to our family. She too lives with a what if of her own. Now I'm gonna cry. Um, every year on his birthday, I always think like, I almost didn't get this. Like, he almost could have been somewhere else. It's not perfect. Co-parenting and navigating stuff like that is not easy. But what in life really is? It just shouldn't happen if a birth mother does not get adequate counseling. Liz Crawford, 10 Tampa Bay.